Hey guys and welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Phil Richards. In today's video we're going to be talking about testing passive range of motion of the ankle joint, or the talocrural joint to be more precise. So the purpose of testing passive range of motion is to see what happens to our patient's movement when the active contractile structures are taken out of the equation. If you're not familiar with why we test passive range of motion, we suggest you check out our video titled Why Test Passive Range of Motion for the full clinical reasoning process behind why we do what we do. So as to not slow your video down, we're not going to be comparing the left and the right sides, but of course in practice we always want you to compare the affected and unaffected sides to see if it will inform your patient's diagnosis. So when we're thinking about testing passive range of motion, we need to think about testing three things. Pain, range and end feel. Okay, that's it. Let's get into our main video. So now we're going to look at passive range of motion of the ankle into dorsiflexion, which occurs at the talocrural joint, which is the articulation between the talus and the tibia fibula complex. So as a therapist, we're going to stand on the side of the testing leg and we're going to cup the heel bone, the calcaneus, like so. And we're going to use our forearm to secure the plantar aspect of the foot. From here, we're going to place the flat of our hand around the tibial tuberosity region so as to not put pressure on the knee joint. Once we've secured that down, we're going to lean our body weight across to pull the foot ankle into full dorsiflexion. So that's the action. So let's talk about pain, range and end feel. For your note taking, you want to find out where the pain starts and finishes, if that occurs on this movement. And the common sites for getting pain during this movement are on the joint line, which can be either the anterior, posterior, medial, or the lateral aspect of the joint from impingement syndromes, or from catching the tendons that wrap around the malleoli. We're also eliciting a passive stretch from the Achilles up through the calf. So you may get pain there. The normal range of motion expected is 20 degrees starting from plantar grade coming backwards this way and the expected end feel is elastic. From here we can also do a similar passive range of motion but with the knee in flexion. The process for this is very similar. We're still going to cut the calcaneus we're still going to have the forearm supporting the plantar aspect. It's just this time we're going to put our hand on the top of the knee and perform the same action. The only real difference from this action relative to the last one is we're expecting more available dorsiflexion because we've slackened off the gastrocnemius and the end feel is likely to be hard because it's a joint restriction that's stopping us going further. So now we're going to look at passive range of motion of the ankle into plantar flexion. And this occurs at the talocrural joint, which is the articulation of the talus and the tibia fibula complex. So as a therapist, we're going to stand at the end of the bed. We're going to cut the heel, the calcaneus, with one hand. And we're going to use the flat of the other hand and place it on the dorsum of the foot. The patient is going to be supine or long sitting. The action. With both hands, we're going to simultaneously pull the foot down into plantar flexion. And the reason we're doing it simultaneously is so that we don't end up stressing, hopefully you can see at home if I just stress from here, end up stressing different parts of the joints unevenly. We want one swift movement to get the talocrural joint involved. So when you're doing this in practice, you need to mark whether there was pain present when doing this passive movement, either if it was the through the range or at the end of the range. And common points of pain for this are the anterior joint line or the posterior joint line back here, which can occur in impingements, or the passive stretch that occurs on the dorsiflexus here. The normal expected range is 50 degrees and the expected end feel is an elastic end feel. If it is not elastic, it may be blocked either at the subtalar or the talocrural joint, either from general stiffness or perhaps an osteoarthritic condition. 
So now we're going to look at passive range of motion of the ankle into inversion, which occurs at the subtalar joint. Our patient will be in a supine or long sitting position. And as a therapist, we're going to stand at the end of the bed. We're going to have one hand reaching through, cupping and supporting the calcaneus. And the other hand with our Pac-Man grip, reaching across and holding, securing the tarsals. From here, we're going to simultaneously pull both hands in rotating the ankle like so, bringing it into a fully inverted position. For clinical practice, it would be better if you can bring your arm out like so and secure the calcaneus and pivot across this way. But I appreciate on the video, you won't really be able to see what's happening. So I'm showing you it in this fashion so you can clearly see the heel movement that's occurring. So let's talk about the pain, the range, and the end feel. As with all passive movements, we want to document if pain is reported by the patient and whether it was during the movement or the end range of the movement, for example. And the common sites of pain when performing this motion are, if we can have Marie's other leg, down the lateral aspect here, due to the passive stretch that is occurring on the structures here, such as the ATFL, the ligament here, superficial and deep perineal nerves, and the perinei muscle group, for instance. The normal range of motion is 40 degrees, and the expected end feel is elastic. As we get to the end range here, it's these soft tissue structures that remain on stretch at the end. If it does feel like a more abnormal hard end feel, this could be due to chronically tight tissue or because of osteoarthritis that has occurred in and around the joint margin, which is preventing this inward movement. Uh, next, we're going to look at passive range of motion of the ankle into eversion, which is going to articulate around the subtalar joint. Our patient, once again, is going to be in supine or long sitting. And as a therapist, we're going to stand at the end of the bed and we're going to once again cup underneath the calcaneus, securing that heel bone. And with our Pac-Man grip, we're going to reach across and secure the tarsals. From here, we're going to pull both hands across to bring the foot into a fully everted position. And hopefully you can see at home that I've already created an error by bringing the patient's foot out into lateral rotation. So if that happens to you in clinic, like it just happened there, just bring the leg back into alignment and repeat the same thing again so you're not misleading yourself into a false range. As with the inversion handling, I would like you to perform the handling, cupping the calcaneus like so, but I appreciate you probably can't see the ankle with clarity if I do that handling on the video. So instead, I'm going to show you it from here. So let's discuss the pain, the range, and the end feel. As with all passive movements, we want to make a note of where pain occurs either at the beginning of the motion, maybe partway through the motion or at the end of the range. And the common sites of pain are around the joint line. And if you have a condition, if we can just use Marie's other leg, called tibialis posterior dysfunction, where the tip post runs under here and gets very inflamed and sore as the foot is brought into eversion, you can sometimes reproduce the patient's pain from a passive stretch there. If we borrow Marie's other foot again. And another one to be aware of is patients that present with pain across here following an ankle inversion sprain. And what can sometimes happen is because of the way the tissue stretched here, the fibula head actually it starts to migrate a few millimeters forwards. And so when we bring the foot in this way, it can actually impinge. So that's something to look out for. The normal range expected is 20 degrees and the expected end feel is harder and more elastic due to the deltoid ligament, if I can get the legs swapped again, that spans across here. It's like a triangular shaped ligament um, approximating, which won't let us go any further. An abnormal end feel might be that it's particularly more unusually hard. And normally, if we swap the legs once again, with the pain 
occurring across the joint line from an osteoarthritic condition, for instance. So let's summarize this video on passive range of motion of the ankle joint. First, complete your passive range of motion with the patient in a supine or long sitting position. When completing your passive tests, be aware of your handling for each movement and make sure to compare the affected and unaffected sides. Test your passive range of motion for plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, inversion and eversion. And when completing your tests, make a note of pain, range and end feel. And that concludes our video on testing passive range of motion at the ankle joint. From here, we'd like it if you compared your passive range of motion findings with your active range of motion findings to see if it's more likely that a non-contractile or a contractile lesion is causing your patient's condition. This alongside your other tests will inform your patient diagnosis. If you're not familiar with why we test active range of motion and passive range of motion, we suggest you check out our videos titled Why Test Active Range of Motion and Why Test Passive Range of Motion for the full clinical reasoning process behind why we do what we do. Guys, thanks so much for watching again. We'll see you again soon on Clinical Physio.